Alrighty, welcome back everyone. We just talked about some of the most important players for the big time teams in the country. Definitely a lot of guys on the defensive side of the ball for some of those teams. Definitely a hugely important uh, part of the part of the game for some of the big time teams around there. But let's talk about the uh, Kentucky Wildcats here and. This is a very interesting year. Uh, I am a big time fan of Kentucky. I'll be totally honest with you. Uh, I'm going to keep my bias out of this, I promise. But if uh, you know, if you've watched Josh Paydall and you know his relationship with Iowa State, that's going to be my relationship with Kentucky this time uh, this year. So this is a really remarkable team. I think it's a team that might be a little bit overshadowed, to be totally honest with you, with all of the other things going on in the SEC. This is a team that's kind of just a little bit under the radar, and that might be what Mike, uh, Mark Stoops wants to be happening, to be totally honest with you. Um, I think they're a very interesting team. Let's go through this the way we always do, offense, defense, schedule, and then we'll do some final thoughts at the end. Offense is going to be led by Bush Hamden this upcoming year, an OC that came over from Boise State, a very talented guy that definitely will be a quick riser in this industry. But then you also brought in Brock Vandegrift, and he is the absolute key to Kentucky's success. He is going to be the guy that, if he can play a little bit better than Devin Leary did a year ago, show off some of that arm talent, be very accurate, which it sounds like he's been all of those things in spring practice, then he could be absolutely incredible. He has tons of weapons around him, and the defense is not too shabby by any means either. But the running back room is one of those that you would like a little bit more from, but not necessarily bad by any means. You have Chip Trainum, who came in from Ohio State. You also have um, uh, Demi Sumo Karingbe. You also have Jamarian uh, Wilcox, Jason Patterson. So you have some guys there, uh, definitely guys that can fill in some gaps, but definitely would love kind of that go-to definite back um, up there. But Chip Trainum, I think, will be more than fine, and I think they'll have a good run game because I think they have a good pass or run blocking offensive line for sure. And then you look at that wide receiver room, and that's really where the show starts, in my opinion. Barry and Brown is the one that leads the way. His speed is just insane. It's essentially get the ball in his hands and let him go to work because he can do just crazy things with the ball in his hands. Then you have Dane Key, an elite route runner, very, very uh, veteran guy that can definitely be a third down type guy where if you need a catch, you can go to this guy and he is going to be sure-handed. You have Anthony Brown Stevens, who's going to be a really good outside player that definitely could be a deep threat this upcoming uh, year. And then Jamori Macklin, you add to that group, and I think he's going to do just remarkable things. He's a very good route runner, can definitely be a guy that when one of those guys goes out, you bring in another guy and you don't necessarily miss a beat because he did remarkable things at North Texas a year ago. I think you can have an absolutely special team here and a special group, especially at wide receiver. And then you talk about offensive line. It starts with Marquise Cox. Uh, Marquise Cox is one of the best left tackles, one of the best offensive tackles in the entire country. He is really, really remarkable. Now, the rest of this offensive line is solid. They've all played a, a fair amount of snaps. Dylan Ray, Eli Cox, Jaeger Burton have all played a fair amount of snaps, including last year. You also brought in Gerald Mincy from Tennessee, who is uh, slated to be a big-time player for them at right tackle. So this is a group that... It's a little bit of Marquise Cox and everyone else just because of how good Marquise Cox is, but it feels like they have a good five. Uh, they have a five that, at the very least, can hold up well enough to get this offense moving and definitely get Brock Vandegrift moving because the entire thing rides on him, if I'm being totally honest. Ooh, excuse me. If I'm being totally honest, I think when you look at Brock Vandegrift, if he can hit and be the guy that a lot of people saw when he came out of high school and the guy that he probably still is, he was just at Georgia and was behind some really, really good players at quarterback there, um, they could be up there in the SEC. The, the ceiling doesn't necessarily exist for this team, and I'll break it down more on the defensive side of the ball because... Frankly, I didn't fully realize how good this defense was. I watched them a year ago a ton when I was doing some work for uh, Sports Info Solutions, but at the end of the day, I didn't realize how many guys came back and how many important guys came back. So it all starts with Dion Walker. He is one of the best players in the entire country, if I'm being totally honest, and that guy right there. He can do just remarkable things at the defensive tackle position. Then you have guys right next to him like Keyshawn uh, Silver, Josiah uh, Hayes, Octavius Oxidine, just remarkable players, all guys that can have big time play, uh, big time effects, and also 
you don't necessarily necessarily have to be the number one player. When Dion Walker is taking up that much attention, you're going to have uh, chances to make plays on one-on-one situations. So it'll be fascinating to watch that. The edge rushing will be very solid. You have J.J. Weaver leading the way, very long, athletic guy. Trayvon uh, uh, Ribka is a very, very talented kid as well. And then Tyree Fearby and Khalil, uh, Khalil Saunders coming off the bench are going to be really good. And then Brian Robinson, a freshman that they are sky high on around uh, Lexington, definitely will be a big-time player for them. The linebackers are a really solid group. You brought in Jamon Dumas Johnson from UGA is absolutely huge, replacing Tra- uh, Traven Wilson from uh, Traven Wallace, excuse me, uh, from a year ago, and very very talented kid. And then you have uh, Derek Jackson coming back, a very fundamentally sound middle linebacker, definitely a guy that can hold it down. While Jamon Dumas Johnson does what makes him special and kind of roves around the field and makes some really athletic plays. Then you have Deverne Rayner and uh, Noah Matthews coming off the bench, who are very, very talented linebackers as well, just a little bit younger and don't necessarily have the snaps under their belt that the other guys do. Now, the back end has absolute dudes. I love this back end. I think it starts with me with, uh, well, it starts with Maxwell Harrison, let's be totally honest, but um, uh, Alex Afari is someone that I'm watching incredibly closely. He is kind of the Swiss Army knife for this team, will drop back and play deep safety, can play in the box, can do remarkable things, plays slot corner at times when he needs to, so is a very, very talented guy, is definitely someone that is going to be a huge part of their team. Zion Childress and Jordan Lovett were both big-time starters for them a year ago at safety. They'll be right back there, so we'll be very confident in them. Maxwell Harrison is one of the better corners in the entire country, especially outside corners who can really make him remarkable players on the ball. He's right there, uh, probably returning one of the pick sixes he had a year ago. And then you have John Quees uh, Hardaway, who is a very, very talented player. He's replacing Andrew Phillips from a year ago. So the defense overall is going to be good. There's no two ways about that. I think when you talk about a couple of players that could step up and make it elite, I think you talk about D. Eric Jackson at the linebacker position or maybe Alex Afari or Jordan Lovett at the safety position because you're going to need a guy to take that next step, to go to the next level. But there's plenty of guys that can do that um, to you know add to the Dion Walkers of the world, to add to the Maxwell Harrisons of the world. Adding one other guy to that will be just remarkable to watch. So Love this team overall, but let's look at the schedule and see just what they're up against because there's a lot. Uh, let's be totally honest with you. Week one is a, a layup. There's there's no two ways about that. South Carolina should be a very interesting game, but one they should likely win, especially at home. But overall, this uh, schedule is doable. I, I think there is definitely not necessarily the greatest um, breaks in some aspects, but uh, I definitely think there are places that you can make all of this work where you have an out-of-conference game then two in-conference games that are going to be hugely important Georgia at home is one of those games that if you win it you're totally changing your program overnight Um, and then you have Ohio before going to Ole Miss which I think is going to be maybe the most important game on this entire schedule if I'm being totally honest if they win that game they're on a totally different echelon than they would be if they lose that game and they're kind of where Kentucky usually is Um, but also Having to go to Ole Miss, having to go to Florida, Tennessee, and Texas is really tough. Uh, Splitting those four would be really good, if I'm being totally honest. That would be a huge win. Now, they likely should beat Florida, at least from a roster perspective, but the other three are going to be very sketchy, and Florida's going to be very sketchy because you got to go to Florida and play um, in the swamp, so it's never going to be easy. But I think uh, the stretch that I'm watching most closely is the Florida game to the Tennessee game. So at Florida, Auburn, and then at Tennessee. If they can somehow, if they go 2-1 and one in that stretch, I think it's a great win. If they go 3-0 and oh in that stretch, we're looking at uh, Kentucky in an entirely new light, uh, especially going into the last couple of weeks in the season. They have a bye and then a Murray State at Texas, which is a game that right now I think a lot of people are penciling in as a win for Texas because they're at home, because they're playing a team that, on paper, is not as good as they are, but Kentucky could be a wildly different team, at least from perspective standpoint, by the time we get there. So it'll be really remarkable to watch this team. I think when you look at this team overall, I can see 10 wins. I can also see seven wins. So I can see this team do really remarkable things. I think that guy, Dion Walker, is going to have as much to say as anyone, really, uh, about what this team can do. But when you look at this team overall, 
it's Brock Vandegrift. Um, you'd love to say that this really good defense can get them all the way to where they need to be. You would love to say that all of these wide receivers and some of the ability is going to get them there, but you need the guy to push the right buttons. And Devin Leary did a really good job early in the season and then tapered off during the SEC schedule. Brock Vandegrift's not going to have a ton of time to get ready for the SEC schedule. They're going to be thrown right into the fire with South Carolina and Georgia early on. And if he can handle those, we'll have an idea of what uh, Kentucky can be. Because if Brock Vandegrift, say, Georgia walks into town, his former team, and he maybe they don't win, but maybe they lose by seven points, and he has a really good game. People are going to start looking at Kentucky, and they absolutely should be right now, but that's a that's a problem we can deal with during the season. Um, there is a world where they go on the road to Oxford, beat Ole Miss, and are 7-1 and one entering the Tennessee game. If that happens, we are having a weird conversation around Kentucky that I think a lot of people are not prepared for. And then, say you beat Tennessee, uh, like, let's just you know, live in hypothetical world here for a second— Say you beat Tennessee, and even if you lose to Texas and beat Louisville, you might be in the playoff as a 10-2 team uh, for Kentucky. So this is one of those uh, teams where I've seen Mark Stoops do a ton with a lot less talent than this. I've seen Mark Stoops do a ton with a defense that's not as good as this one, or an offense that is not as talented, or a quarterback that is not quite as talented as the one that he has in front of him. Now, can they take that next step in 2024? Can they become a team that is not only to be reckoned with in the SEC East, that is no longer a thing, but uh, to be reckoned with in the SEC as a whole and maybe a national conversation? So Kentucky, I think there's a little bit of a worry, right? They're, the offensive line is not necessarily quite as strong as you want it to be. There's definitely some holes in this team, but there's a lot of stuff there that has not been there in the past. And I think it's something that Mark Stoop is kind of salivating at the mouth because he has talent that he hasn't had there maybe in his entire tenure um so he'll be fascinating to watch this team will be fascinating to watch and i think if we look up in november and kentucky is a team with one loss don't say i didn't tell you (laughs) i'll put it that way um but that'll do it for this edition of the gsmc college football podcast brought to you by the gsmc sports network your support means a lot to us so please remember to subscribe to the show leave a positive review it does make a huge difference for us Also, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, all of the social pages for all of the content and updates you could possibly need. We have incredible people doing work for every sport in the world, so don't worry about that. If you need anything in the world of sports, come on over to GSMC, and we have you totally covered. So uh, thank you once again for listening, and I will see you guys tomorrow.